Okay, let's continue with number 20. So for this one, uh, I'm going to replace, so I'm going to take the diagram, P, whoop, some point X, and then R, in fact that point is called Q. And I'm going to take moments about Q. We know the whole length is L, which makes this bit that we want to find x and this distance here l minus x um, and then we've got the masses so we've got the mass of p times x about point q so if i'm taking let's move that down slightly if i'm taking moments about q uh, and then that we, we know is going to be equal those are going to be balanced if that's the center of mass because I can hold like if you imagine I have a ruler and my fingers at the end and I slide them into the middle and then I find the center of mass in the middle and then the masses on each end are going to be balanced at this point around the center of mass so I'm applying a force at the center of mass but I'm not applying a turning effect and that's one of our ways of defining where the center of mass is so on my other side I've got the mass of R multiplied by L minus X um, all I'm going to do really is I'm going to substitute I'm going to multiply out so I've got the mass of P so that gives me 3x and the mass of R which is 4 and I multiply that that gives me 4L uh, minus 4x uh, so then I'm going to put my X's on one side it gives me if I move my minus 4x to the other side, I get plus 7x equals 4l. And then to find x, divide both sides by 7, I get 4l over 7. Uh, so 4l over 7 uh, gives me c. Slightly confusingly, I couldn't find the letters. So number 21, a vehicle travels on a straight road. Starting at time t equals zero, the graph shows how velocity varies with time. Uh, so in fact, in order to find the distance from its start position, that's going to be the displacement. Displacement's a vector, so my, I'm traveling a straight road, so I'm just going forwards and backwards along a straight road. So these positive velocities give me a forward motion uh, and you can think of the negative velocities giving me a backwards motion so what I'm going to do if I take the area a and the area B because the area under a velocity time graph velocity times time that's going to be displacement I'm going to say that s the displacement is going to be the area a minus the area B and that's not too tricky so um, for a trapezium we get half, we've called that one little a and little b if we like, that half a plus b, and then whoop, we have that as the height, so half a plus b plus height, and then minus, um, I'm going to put some words in slightly confusingly. If I was doing this in an exam, I'd be calculating this area. Or these two areas I wouldn't be putting in uh, labels like this but I'm just um, doing it for clarity I would just be putting numbers straight in so I'm gonna get a half uh, a plus B so that's 20 plus 5 to 15 is 10 so that's uh, 30 times H which is 15 minus a half times the base of that which is 10 times the height of that which is annoyingly seven I think that looks like seven to me so I get 15 times 15 and 15 times 15 hasn't got a one in it it's 225 15 squared is 225 you should really know <coughs> all your square numbers up to 15 at least possibly 20 um, ideally at this point although 14 squared might bamboozle me um, so then I get 5 lots of 7 which is 35 I take those two away uh, and I get 190 meters which gives us a fabulous little 
B there for question 21. 22, I've got a suitcase weighing 200 newtons on a weighing scale and a lift. Um, and the scale reads 180 newtons when the lift is moving. So at this point, um, what the scale reads, that's the res reaction force uh, on the ground. So I'm kind of, you can imagine, the way I imagined this question the first time, well, every time I do questions like this, I kind of imagine what it feels like. So it feels like I'm lighter. So 180 is less than 200. Therefore, I feel lighter. I can probably prove that, but I wouldn't like to because I want to get this done. If I'm moving at a constant velocity, then my um, there's no there's no resultant force. There's no there's nothing's happening to me. I feel normal weight. If I'm moving down and going slower. I feel heavier, so it's not that one. If I'm moving up at a constant velocity, then nothing changes. But if I'm moving up and slowing down, uh, it's a little bit like going over a bridge in a car, right? You're moving up, but because you're going around, um, you're moving up, slowing down. Um, so it's going to be D. Possibly not a satisfactory explanation, but <clears throat> sometimes you just need to feel it uh, and then this one says a stationary ball is free to move the ball is hit with a bat the graph shows the force of the bat on the ball or how the force of the bat on the ball changes with time and the ball's got a mass of 0 0.0544 I'm trying to find speed um, I know that impulse is the area under a force time graph and that also equals change in momentum uh, I could also say that it equals mv minus mu uh, I could also say that it equals ft um, <clears throat> again we've got the area of a triangle so I've got a half t times the maximum force that's the half base times height of that triangle uh, and that's going to be equal to um, a stationary ball, so u whoosh, equals zero, equals the mass times the new velocity. So in order to find the new velocity, I'm going to type into my calculator 0 0.5 times my time, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by my maximum force, which reads 1400 newtons, all over the mass which is 0, 0.0 I mean how kind they put it in the right units for us and everything so I'm going to do this on my calculator and then I'm going to find out what that new um, that velocity is so I go 0. 0.5 times and I'm pressing 5 and then the exp button and then minus 3 to keep that, that number in standard form all as one thing. You might have a times 10 to the power button, which is the same thing as an EXP button, but you must use that button, um, otherwise you're going to end up with it have it thinking it's two numbers, and then you get a bit confused. Divide that point zero four four, uh, and I get a velocity of 79.545, etc. And those are repeating if I want to do that. But I'm not worried in all those decimal places because uh, I know that I have to have a certain number of significant figures. And actually, in this case, it's do. And that gives me 80 meters per second. I believe that brings us to the end. Hopefully, that was already helpful and you've learned loads.